I'm on my way over to San Jose, California for the Big Search Market Expo event, XMX West. It's a jam-packed conference, two full days of non-stop content. I'll be on stage, I think, pretty much the whole entire day, and then I'll be interviewing lots and lots of great personalities from the SEM and SEO community. So I'm looking forward to sharing those with you uh, for that trip. Looking forward to a safe and coronavirus-free trip. Uh, that's what's in the news now. I'm not sure when this video will be produced, but hopefully by the time this video is published, um, all that news and all that information will be done with, and hopefully everybody will be healthy and uh, happy uh, throughout the trips and their travels and business trips and personal trips. Any event, hope you enjoy uh, the various interviews that I'm doing at XMX, and I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. Enjoy. Today I get to interview Daniel Weisberg. Daniel I've known for probably over 15 years. I first met him, I believe, back um, before he was a Googler, for sure, um, in Israel when I was running XMX Israel events. He kind of spoke on our analytics sessions. Uh, and then Google recruited him and he was started to work for the Google Analytics team for years and years now. I mean, he's been at Google for many, many years. And then just recently, about a year or so ago, maybe a little longer, um, he joined the Google Webmaster Trends Analyst team specifically to work on Google Search Console related questions. So he's been doing all these videos around how to use Google and uh, Google Search Console and a bunch of other things around Google Search Console related stuff. He's an analytics guru and he's also been part of the SEO community for I don't know, probably like 20 years. So it makes sense. And he's doing an amazing job at Google, specifically in the Google Search Console team. So I'm looking forward to talking to him um, here at XMX um, about what's upcoming and what's new. So hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's sponsor time. You heard me talk about Ezoic before. They recently launched their Site Speed Accelerator, which instantly guarantees an 80 plus Google Page Speed Score, improving your website's UX and ranking. What you may not know about Ezoic is that they are primarily a technology for publishers. They're best known for helping content creators automate complex operations related to monetizing their content. The platform lets publishers create experiments that machine learning will then execute to help publishers increase ad revenue and balance user experience along the way. If you'd like to learn more about Ezoic, the Site Speed Accelerator, or their complete platform for publishers, you can visit www.ezoic.com. Daniel, thanks for doing this video. It's not as polished as your videos, but I appreciate you doing that. Um, we are at XMX West, and this video will probably come out in several months. So I apologize for the delay, but okay. you know how much editing goes into this stuff. Yeah. Not mine, really, but anyway. So now you've been at Google for a pretty long time, since 2013, right? Yeah. And you were on the Google Analytics team, from what I remember. Yeah. And then you said, I had enough with you Google Analytics people. You're doing nothing to help the world. I'm going to Google Search Console team, and I'm going to help people with SEO. Exactly. That was my, <laughs> you're quoting my tweet, is it? I quoted your tweet and uh, your dreams. What you're dreaming. Okay. <laughs> no, but in reality, you, you did leave the search the Google Analytics team to join the Search Console team about a year and a half ago or so, I believe. Yeah. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about how that transition went? Or is going, actually? Yeah. So actually, I was in the Google Analytics team for almost six years. And before that, I was doing analytics implementations. Yes. I was writing for Search Engine Land for yes. quite a long time, covering GA. Yeah. And I remember meeting you first in Israel, I think in XMX Israel. Yeah. And you're like, we need somebody to talk about analytics. And everyone's like, well, you're the analytics expert. So you spoke about analytics before you were actually part of the Google Analytics team. Yeah. And they recruited you, or you applied, or how that work? Uh, actually, I reached out to someone, mm -hmm. and I was moving to the UK, and I wanted to work for Google, mm -hmm. and I thought that it would be really interesting to work on that Google Analytics team, as opposed to they didn't have any openings in London at the time, but then uh, they ended up like opening something, and it was a really interesting time working for GA, working like doing the same work that I'm doing for Search Console now. So I was an advocate. I was presenting about analytics everywhere and writing stuff. But I did get a bit tired. And it's just the same dimension, same metrics for too long. You were working closely with Louis Gray? Louis Gray, Louis and, Gray. yeah. And Louis and Adam and Krista. Adam. Yeah, so the four of us, we were kind of uh, 
a sub team in the education team. And, and, and Lewis is still there, but not not Adam. Yes, and Krista. Krista still not there. as well. Not no. as well. Okay. No. So yeah, we used to do advocacy, and then the sh product shifted a bit. So I decided to move on, and I found this incredible team. Incredible. Under John Mueller, who is a fantastic person. And I joined the team, and the team is very interesting in that it's, it covers a lot of ground, so the whole search. And we have our little focuses in the team. And for example, Martin, he does a technical SEO. Uh, I do a lot of the search console stuff. And John and Gary, they're more focused on search in general. Okay. And now we have a new person since last week, I think. I saw in a photo, yeah, and yeah. I said, I don't know that person. Who is so that person? So that's Cherry. Cherry's okay. based in Singapore, okay. and she's going to be working with us. And she has been at Google for a while. She, she was involved in search-related stuff as well, but now she officially moved. What's going to be her topic? Or and she's trying to figure it out. TBD. To be determined. Okay. To be determined. And you warned her about us, right? What? You warned her about us. Yeah. OK, she knows what to expect. OK, good. Cool. And um, were you using Google Analytics when it was still Urchin? I was. You were. I yeah. loved Urchin. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's, let's go into a little bit about, um, I guess, what you're doing for the Search Console team. So we see your face a lot in videos. Yeah. You like to be on videos. I do. This is yeah. right now. <laughs> and so tell us what you do. Was that your initiative? How'd that come up in terms of doing all these video? So I think that the, the timing of the change to the Search Console team was really happy because we were just finishing the, the migration from Webmaster Tools to Search Console. And so the product has been changing quite significantly over the last few years. Right. So we couldn't really do any videos before that because it was changing too fast. And as I moved, we kind of finalized the migration. Right. That's because I moved, so I just I said, well, let me finish this stuff, and then I wrote the code and finished. <laughs> you pressed that button, okay? <laughs> no, 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 it was not me. Okay. So, so that's the team in Tel Aviv. The engineers they're all in Tel Aviv, and they have been working for for a long time on this migration. And and actually, so I came into the team, and I was like, well, now the solution is not going to change that quickly. The the tool is not ch going to change. And I started working on on videos. So I thought it would be great to to have some uh, some some official videos. And it was really interesting. I think for me as well, in terms of transitioning from Google Analytics to Search Console, uh, it was really important because, well, writing the scripts and like going through the review process and working with, uh, well, I was sitting just beside the engineer. So it's really helpful that I could, while I was writing the scripts and understanding each of the reports, each of the features, I could just reach out to the engineers and understand how why they made their choices and how it works behind the scenes. And so, so doing the videos was a really, really interesting project to get to know the product. And coming from analytics that I knew pretty well, yeah. it was really helpful to kind of get up to speed. With. So you're kind of in this like quasi space where mm -hmm. you're working with engineers, specifically on Source Console. I mean, that's your key focus within the search, within the, I guess, what we used to be called the Webmaster Trends Analyst Team. Yeah. And now you're calling search it Search Relations. Search Relations, yeah. which is nice. It's nice to, it's a nicer name, I think. Yeah. So now, how does that all fit? Then you have like Danny Sullivan, who's on the, I guess, the search side with the engineers who program search. Mm -hmm. You're with a search console team, which is more analytics focused, I guess, and solution driven. Um, so where does that all sit? Like. Like oh, there's a big confusion about what John Mueller's role is, what Danny's role is, what Paul Har does, what yeah. Matt Cutts used to do. So okay. explain it all. Tell us what to what to I do. I think you'll have to ask John that question. John has to, <laughs> John has to ask I mean, I, I know more or less what each of those groups do. Right. And I won't talk about Danny's role. I think that's uh, Well I interviewed well, him already, yeah, so Yeah. And he's gonna be in uh, yes. SMX. X SMX Advanced. Advanced. Yeah, I get to exactly. interview him there too. So, but John's team, I think we are the, the voice, the external voice of search. So we, we kind of work with our engineers. It's a two-way channel between the search engineering team and the community. So right. we try to bring feedback into search, into the engineers. Well, this is not working. We think it should work differently or would like to see, you know, search team, the search product going that direction and this kind of uh, we kind of consult internally and we 
So basically, when the SEO community is complaining about we want voice search data filters in the search performance report, you go back to the engineer saying, hey, we, the SEO community or the webmaster community is saying, we want this. Can we please, mm. please do it? Here's some donuts, here's something to incentivize <laughs> them. And then they're like, no, yeah. we want the chocolate donuts, not the yeah. vanilla donuts. We, we, we usually use hummus and falafel oh, yes. and other stuff, not the... But yeah, so sometimes we do agree, sometimes we don't agree with what we hear outside. So it goes through future as well. Right. And we discuss it internally and I think with Search Console is a bit, let's say, easier than Search in general. Search is a very large product with loads of people working yeah. on it. And, and I think Search Console is still a somewhat small team that is more agile. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I met with them once yeah. in Israel, like, I think like two and a half years ago. And they're like, can you put together a list of stuff that you know the community wants or they don't like? And I'm like, sure. So I tweet out something and I put together these slides and it really came out with nothing. But again, I mean, like one of these examples is, can we, can we talk about voice search filters? I don't want to put uh, it on the spot. We could always edit it. We not. can, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but like what? Yeah. I mean, I, I know not everybody in the search console team agrees with each other. I know everybody, yeah. not everybody in the search relations team agree with each other, mm -hmm. but why not provide, for, I mean, at one point, I think in yeah. 2000 something, Dan, John Mueller is like, yeah, we think it's important. We actually re they released a beta version of a filter that shows voice queries yeah. filtered. Then they didn't release that. What was the rationale behind that? It's gonna, they're worried that it's gonna hurt the SEO community to understand that? Or it's no, gonna, no, it's not because we think it's gonna hurt. It's okay. because we don't see how it's gonna help. I think one of the of the jobs of the search console team, and I think they do it really well, is that well the search console team is the well it's a data product, right? So we're releasing data from Google Search into the world, and right. obviously there is a lot of data, right. right? We have to pick the data that we think will be actionable, right? And I think the that's what has been driving the search console team, and I think very rightly so, is that we want to provide data that is actionable not data that is interesting, right? It's, we want to provide data that will help you make better decisions on your website. And I think the focus on, for example, fixes or showing structured data markup errors, right? right? So this is very actionable. You see that, you know you have to fix something, you go, you fix it, you check on Search Console, you validate the fix, and then Google recrawls the website and tells you if you fixed it or not, right? If we right. see the fix or not. So I think that's, that's a, a pretty hard thing to do to juggle all the data source that we have internally and decide what's going externally. And I think with the voice search is, I mean, and I think I heard John saying that a few times, it's just another keyboard. Like it's not, I mean, you're saying something, but then it's like Google is converting it into words and then it's showing a page. It's not gonna help you to know if that query was made through a voice search or a keyboard. What's the right? Yeah, yeah. Text search. I guess. So, but we all want it. So, could you just make it happen? Why? Just push. The Convince code. me. You have the code base. <laughs> just hit push. I do. I have it in my pocket so right just, now. Just press the button <laughs> and push it through. All right. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe yes. Um, are there anything that you think the SEO community is maybe overlooking or? not seeing eye to eye to when it comes to Search Console data. There's been a lot of like, I mean, over the years, a lot of negativity around all oh, Google's hiding this information or it doesn't match up or, you know, when you have multiple insights, like you have Google Analytics saying this, you have Search yeah. Console saying that. I mean, is that one of the things that often is like one of those? This is a challenge coming from the analytics side. I mean, just to mention your last point is like the consistency yes. between the tools is something that is it's really hard to do. And now it's even harder because of the, like, Search Console uh, shows the canonical version, right. GA shows any URL, so you cannot really match. There is no, I mean, you can, but it's a, it's a big engineering uh, effort. Any event, um, we like to keep these videos somewhat short, and I really do appreciate everything you've been doing for the SEO community, even before you joined Google. Obviously, speaking at all the conferences, being a Search Engine Land contributor, um, doing so much work with the Google Analytics team, and now with the Search Console team and the Search Relations team, I guess. You're part, officially part of the Search Relations, but your subtopic 
where your specialty is Search Console, I guess. Yes. That's how we call it. Yeah. Yeah. In event, thanks for all that stuff that you do. Um, you are sharing tons of videos on your Twitter handle and on the YouTube channel, so you should all subscribe to the youtube.com slash Google Webmasters, I think is the URL. Yeah. Um, you're on Daniel Was Wasberg at on Twitter, right? Yeah. Just search for that. Yeah, Daniel Wasberg. Anything else? Like how people follow uh, you? Or your LinkedIn? No, you're just looking for new jobs? No, no you're happy not really. At Google. I'm very happy at Google. I'm I'm happier and happier. So you I'm, seem happier. Yeah, yeah so. I'm like the move from analytics to search console. It was like plunging into a cold plunge of happiness. Of just. <laughs> A pool of Waking happiness. up to the world. <laughs> to I know. The world. Working, I mean, working with every day with like Adam and Lewis, that must be challenging. <laughs> no, I'm friendly with them. I'm just joking. So. Yeah. Um, hopefully, they'll see this video and thumbs down it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Any event, thank you so much for everything you do. So people can follow you yeah. mostly on Twitter, I guess, is where yes. you're most active. Yeah. Cool. I'll get that Twitter handle in the corner over, or maybe the top corner. I'm not really sure where. Any event, subscribe to their YouTube channel, follow Daniel on Twitter, and thank you very much for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you.